Clip has gone viral of the Limpopo Health MEC telling schoolgirls to, quote, close your legs and open your books. She visited Juanada Secondary School on Wednesday. There has been something of a backlash, with some saying her words were inappropriate. Let's start by showing you, a, let's take a look at that video. To the open your books and close your legs. The Limpopo Health MEC, Poppy Ramatuba, joining us now. Thank you for uh, joining us, MEC. Uh, some say by telling girls uh, to close their legs, you, you're putting this responsibility on, on them only for sexual behaviour, uh, leaving out the boys. But you say you were taken out of context. Uh, afternoon, Francis, and afternoon to all your viewers out there. Uh, what we indicated is that I think um, we will advise everyone to go through the entire video uh, so that they can realize that the message was not just on the girl chant. Um, if you can hear the beginning of this uh, video, it simply says to the girl chant, meaning previously we were addressing uh, other uh, people who are responsible, like your, your boy child, your sugar daddies, your all all, all those uh, blessers out there, and and the the fact of the matter is that teenage pregnancy has reached a level of a crisis, and the Department of Health is the one that is bearing the brand of teenage pregnancy, and the reality, another reality is that while yes, I did address the boy child, I've told them to sleep with their boys, not with girls. We have even further to come, to come up with a slogan to say they must uh, close their sleep and open their books. But however, the emphasis, the investment, it's on a girl child. And of course, I'm not surprised and shocked when there is this particular reaction. Because as a nation, as a society, we've been lying to ourselves because we are afraid to deal with these issues with our children. Yes. As parents, we have outsourced discussing issues of sex with our children. In the olden days, I'll speak about the Bavenda culture, because parents knew it would never be easy. It's not a comfortable topic, even for me, to talk with my girls. But those, our ancestors, knew that this is difficult. That's why you would have cultural e e e e events, like, for instance, your dorm by your observatory, where the girl child will be taken there and they will be taken through this process. We have removed that. The girls in our province, many of them who are child-headed family, some of them who are, uh, all, they just don't have active parenting. These are the ones that forms the bulk of the 19,000 teenagers that we recorded to have delivered in our facilities, not including those who presented termination, which were 3,000, mm -hmm. and the other that we don't even have their records uh, of street abortion which are increasing our maternal death, which we are struggling to, to eradicate as a country. So and I'm saying this the, because... The, the way you, you phrased it um, is, is pretty blunt as well. So, so you're saying you stand by what you said um, and the way you said it. I, can't, I didn't hear what you say. Uh, some have criticised the, the tone or, or the words you used, uh, saying close your, your legs to, to young girls. Uh, so you say you stand by what you said. Uh, do you also stand by the, the exact wording you used uh, and the tone that you used? I, I stand by, by those words. When we talk to young people, we use slogans. Slogans are catchy. Slogans are able to market. Slogans are able to... Uh, you, you are able to, to make sure that you bring attention and drive the message that you want to. And especially on this particular category. We are talking to the 18, 17 year old. Yeah. They were grade 11 and grade 12. And this is even the law allow them to give consensual sex.
So when we're talking to them, we are not going to use the wording that I will be addressing my friends in the legislature. I will address them in the language that they do understand. So the language which you say is to you open your books uh, uh, and close your legs is the language that they would uh, understand. I don't see anything wrong or that. And I just see that the, this, this, because it's a sensitive topic that we don't want to deal with it. Some are saying, well, I'm victimizing a girl child. And I would want to differ with that. Because as I've indicated, I still want you to show me a boy child who has lost their education and their future because they've impregnated a girl. But on the other side, I will show you so many girls who drop out of school because they don't have anyone to look after their kids. Yeah. I will show you a, a teenage girl who fall pregnant and had difficulty in delivery, forced to go into caesarean section because of age is not even ready. I will show you a belch sometimes who has the developed Sometimes the male learners, sometimes the male learners are the aggressors here. Uh, sometimes male teachers are aggressors. Sometimes women are in, uh, well, young, uh, young girls or, or ad uh, adolescent girls are in very hard socioeconomic conditions. Um, so, so you're saying, you know, the girls should take responsibility, but the, the men may be the aggressors. And, and the Seoul City Institute says you are shirking your responsibility as a governmental leader by putting it firstly on, on the girls. Even if you're not putting it on the girls, you, you're saying the kids must stop this. I still repeat that. It's unfortunate you, you, you're also repeating the mistakes of those who came up with statements that I must withdraw. Because you only focus on the last part of my speech, which was starting by saying to the girl child. You're not going back to the beginning of the speech. There was a time wherein I was addressing the principal himself, where at some stage I was even saying to the principal, do you know that there is a thin line between consent, giving consent from your learners and you and your teachers? Actually, even if your learner is 17, because there's power struggle between you and your learner, that's the power relations. So I will categorize it as rape because your learner is afraid that the future is in your hands. That's why you can't promote that. I went on and spoke about an older man who used material things to learn who has these girls to sleep with them without even condomizing, infecting them with HIV. I went on and gave an example that we were winning the battle of mother to child HIV transmission. At some stage, we we're at 0.03%. But the funny thing is that children are born out of HIV positive mother, born HIV negative. When they turn 15, they are testing HIV positive. When we investigate, it's because of this older man who come and take advantage of what girl child. I've gone through that. But I said at the end, after giving an example that I visited one hospital where a 12-year-old was holding a baby and I stopped the procession. I called the parents of that big child. When they came in, the mother and the aunt and the granny, who is also the single mother, said to me, we know our in-law, they've also paid the damage. So meaning they are all uh, agreeing uh, into this pregnancy. They are supporting this. Then the girl child is on her own. Hence, as Limpopo Provincial Health, we start with our campaign dreams, meaning right. the girl child must be determined to get their goal. Their girl child must develop resistant. The child girl child must be empowered. We must fight AIDS. We must develop proper mentors and role models and, uh, and develop a safe environment for a girl child to go to school. We All have right. done that, and our slogans will be talking to the resilience of a girl child. If I can empower the girl child to be resilient and resist this temptation, we will win this battle because it's the girl child who bear the brand. It's the girl All child right. who is suffering, who lose their future. No, nobody disagrees uh, with that part. Thank you very much, uh, MEC, uh, talking about your, your earlier comments, Health MEC in Limpopo, uh, Poppy Ramatuba.